Yeah. I, I was impressed by the uh, area around the Panama Canal it was all the jungles and the ship uh, was almost too big to get, too wide to get into the lock, but I was uh, steering the ship through the locks of the Panama Canal and I was just 19 years old and that was the first time and also I'm looking forward to doing it one more time now that I'm almost 90 years old I would like to go back through the Panama Canal and also see the brand new third set of locks for the canal. Can you tell us how it was that you came to be steering the ship through the canal? Well, I, I was fortunate in being able to get one of the few jobs as an ordinary seaman on the, the ship. It was the SS Steamship Vanor, which was going down to Chile and, uh, and uh, getting a load of iron ore and bringing it back to Baltimore for the Sparrows Point uh, uh, Bethlehem Steel Company plant and they would go all the way down there and bring it back and they would bring the coal in from uh, from the, the Great Lakes area. But uh, what I felt was that I was on the, as a ordinary shipman, uh, most of the work was like chipping paint on the ship. But the uh, the second trip of the of the uh, ship going back to Chile was on a Sunday afternoon, and the Union Hall was closed, and they were ready to go, and the quartermaster who steered the ship was missing, and he had apparently had a lot of celebration on the weekend, and the ship had to go, and uh, they needed a somebody to steer the ship and I was the only one who, who was not already doing a job uh, that was e equal to the quartermaster job so I volunteered and that's when I had to learn how to steer the ship and uh, by the time we got down to the Panama Canal which was five days after we left Baltimore I had I had, I had been taught the uh, uh, how to how far to turn the wheel and, and when and how much to do it and so I had I had some uh, practic practical <coughs> experience and I went into the canal and the, uh, uh, the older quartermasters we had three quartermasters and I was one of the three and they wanted to take take my job. In, in order to get the the overtime pay, but I said that I would still like to try it. And fortunately, uh, we were able to get through the canal and I did not bump into the sides of the locks. And I felt that was a huge success. And so I still remember that. And I would like to see that and celebrate again going through the Panama Canal. Was that the last trip you made, or did you make more after that? I think that was on the last trip, but we went down and back, and so that, that was on the, my last trip uh, through there, and uh, that was an, an experience of a lifetime. Well, you've had other interesting jobs. Tell us about some of your other jobs, like on the B&O Railroad. Oh, I, during World War II, when all the men were being drafted and I was just uh, 16 years old and so the draft started at 18 and I was too young for the draft and they didn't have enough uh, people working in the locomotive repair shops and uh, they uh, had openings for blacksmith helpers and I applied for a job and I got the job and I learned how to make the fire in the forge at uh, 5.30 in the morning, and I became an expert blacksmith helper in swinging the eight pound sledge. And um, that was an experience 
and that was uh, uh, after that, uh, all the railroads brought in uh, diesel engines, and I worked on the last steam engines that that were uh, went on the cross country trips, and so I I enjoyed learning and becoming a blacksmith helper, and also seeing the twilight of the uh, steam engines. How old do you think you were when you were working on the B&O? Uh, I, uh, I was only uh, 16 years old. Now you also worked as a butcher, didn't you? And that was when I was 15 years old. I was, I was a, uh, worked in, in, in a butcher shop where the, uh, they did not have a supermarket, but they had uh, meat stores and they sold their chickens and uh, all their other meat. And uh, that was when we had ration stamps during World War II. And the only things that weren't big rationed with the stamps were the chickens. So I, I, I worked at selling the meat in the, in the meat market while, while I was 15, and that was right uh, towards the end of World War II, so I, I, I hope that we never have to go through that again. Now, you also put yourself through college making sandwiches. Well, that was in my uh, senior year at uh, Cornell, uh, they had a a uh, cafeteria for the for the men's uh, dormitories, and they were closed. They had uh, a breakfast, lunch, and a supper, and we um, helped them. They closed down at nighttime, so we made several hundred sandwiches. We started selling them in the in the dormitories and also the uh, fraternity houses. And um, that was when the uh, uh, the jobs were paying only 45 cents an hour so that we could uh, earn up to $4 an hour selling sandwiches. And, and so the uh, students enjoyed the the sandwiches and I enjoyed the making some, some money on off selling them. That's no.